Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, it's a black and white conversion inside of Luminar 4. We're going to do a lot of different things to this image to get it to this final result. Let me show you the before. We're starting out with this color image right here, and we'll end up with this. We're going to start from scratch, so it may look a little bit different, but let's get started. This might seem like a strange way to start, but the first thing I want to do is come to the creative section down to Color Styles LUT. And I was experimenting around when I made this image and I came up with a um, LUT that I liked. And I believe it was, looking at my notes here, I think, yeah, Riverside, this guy right here. I just like the way it made the color image look, warmed it up a bit. And so I like that. And... Did I do anything here uh, on the amount? I think I just pretty much left it the way it was because I liked it. So that's step one. Okay, the next step is, you guys know I love this mystical filter. So I went up to mystical and I added a little bit of mystical to it. Just a little bit in here. And then I went to edit mask and I did a luminosity mask, and I showed you that in my last video. I would like to add it just to maybe highlight your shadows. And this time, in this case, I wanted to add it to my shadows, so I went to edit mask, luminosity mask, and that adds it to the lights. It makes a lights luminosity mask. Come up here and right click and invert it. And now it's just gonna go to the shadows. And so, And then I will play with my amount slider a little bit to just get it to look the way I like it. And I think somewhere right around there. And that's the next step. When I'm saying next step, I don't really mean this is the way I do every black and white. But this is just for this particular image. That was the next step. Just wanted to clear that up. All right. So now what I want to do is now we'll get into the black and white conversion. So let's come back to the essentials panel and come to black and white conversion. And all we have to do here is click on convert to black and white. And now we can adjust the different colors of our image. You know, we have reds, yellows, green, cyans, blue, magenta. So I'm going to start with the reds. And usually what I'll do is I'll move it one way, move it the other way, just to see which direction I think it looks best. And I'm thinking I'm going to darken the red tones a little bit. Now let's work with the yellows. Now a lot of the reflections are in yellow. But I don't want this bridge up here, entrance, to go nuclear here. So I want to tone that back a little bit. Just ease off on the hot the lightness of that a little bit here so maybe somewhere right around in there now let's look at the greens there's a green sign over here so it's going to get real bright when i adjust it so i don't want that to go too light so i might just pull that back a little bit now the cyans for, will be up in the sky and in the water a little bit so maybe pull that sky down a little bit i like a nice dramatic sky and let's do our blues as well let's pull our blues down get that nice drama up there in the sky Okay, I was going to say, don't go too crazy here, but I'm going crazy. And I know there's not much magenta in here, so I'm not even going to touch that. And so that's the black and white conversion step. Pretty simple. Have fun with that one. Next, we move up to AI Enhance. Had a look at the screen there to see what it was called. I should know what the name of it is, but they keep changing names. We have AI Accent inside, so I'm just going to add a little bit of AI Accent to this. And not too much. I don't want to go crazy here, but it pops some detail and it adds to the drama of the image. So that's that's a nice, nice little addition there. Now let's do a little bit of AI sky enhance. It'll darken the top of the sky down a little bit. This artificial intelligence, you got to love it, right? Really kind of cool. I don't want to go too crazy here because I'll add a little bit of darkening up here later with a gra graduated filter. If you hear any piano music in the background, that's my wife teaching piano downstairs, so I apologize for that. I don't think it show, comes through too loud. Uh, the next thing is we want to add some AI structure. You know, I can't make an image without a little bit of AI structure. I'm not going to go crazy, but I'm just going to pop up a little bit. You know, we could go really crazy if we wanted to. And this adds to the drama, too. And uh, structure goes really well with black and white, by the way. Because black and white to me is all about contrast and details and textures and things like that. So AI structure is really cool. And then the other one I want to do is details enhancer. Now, I'm not going to do small details. I'm going to do a little bit of negative medium details, but large details will really make these buildings pop out over here. So 
I'm going to do some large details. I'm going to bring that up a decent amount there. And then I'm, then I'm just going to back off the medium details just a little bit here. Just so I don't, add, I don't want to add too much um, overemphasis over on the details, okay? Now we're moving into the land of the pro. So let's go over here and click on pro. Don't you just love that name, pro? If you're not a pro, stay out of here. <laughs> no, please, by all means, come in here. I don't know why they call it Pro, but I guess because it's a little more advanced adjustments. So we want to come here to Adjustable Gradient here. And I just want to work with the top here. So let's go to Set Orientation. And let's start out right here and play with it. So we're on top. You can, all, you can adjust bottom or top. What I want to do is just open up the exposure on the top just a little bit. And so let me see here. Let's play with the contrast. Yeah. Let's add a little more contrast. Because really what I'm trying to do is get these buildings lightened up a little bit in here. I wish they had a reflected gradient so I could darken the top and the bottom, but just lighten up the center. And then you have an adjustable radial uh, masking tool you could use as well, but I think this is going to work nice. Now let's check our shadows out here and see if we want to go. Yeah, I might want to darken these shadows up a little bit here. Let me just uh, re readjust the exposure. See what direction I'm heading here. Let me hit this toggle here. Yeah, it is lightening. It is lightening those buildings up a little bit. I just want to draw your eye into those buildings a bit. And uh, I think that's it here. And now we're going to go on to some adjustment layers. The adjustment layers are a powerful component of uh, Luminar 4, and I really like them a lot, and they're really great. So let's come up here to uh, this little icon here for layers, give that a click, and let's add a new layer. And I always recommend name your layers. I'm not going to do it in the tutorial because it gets a little long, but let's go add new adjustment layer. And for this, I want to darken the top por par portion of the sky. Sorry, I can't talk. And... Uh, Anyway, to do that, what we're going to do is come to the Essentials tab and go to Light, and we're just going to pull the exposure back. And we can readjust here, so don't worry. I'm just going to pull it back to there. Come down here to Edit Mask, and let's get a gra uh, gradient mask. And it says click and drag to draw gradient. So I'm going to click and drag to draw gradient, just like they told me to do. So I'm obedient here. And then we can take this and move it where we want. I just want to close off the top portion of this image. Now you can take this uh, line right here and drag up. And this is a graduated area right in here. So, you know, you can widen it up a bit and, you know, get a wider graduation point here. So I'm thinking maybe somewhere around there. Now let's go back and revisit the exposure here. And yeah, because we don't want to overdo it here. But I do want to darken that up a bit. Maybe, uh, I think, right around in there. And really, just keep studying your image to see what it needs. And what I think is, like, right on this water here, I just want to tone this down a little bit here. I'm going to use another adjustment layer. And so we click the little plus to add new adjustment layer. And then what I want to do is uh, come back to Essentials and come back to Light. Pull the exposure down a little bit. This time, let's try something different. Let's get Edit Mask. Let's do a Radial Mask. Click and drag to draw a circle. Okay. I really don't want a circle. I want more of an oval. So we can, you know, grab these little dots here, or really anywhere in here, and you can pull this down. And then we can adjust the shape. One thing I wish they would do is, you see, I wish I could see this... Um, interface here that's what i'm calling it go off the screen here and you don't so that kind of bugs me a little bit but let me just drag this out and so if i really want to adjust here i got to pull this over and pull out on here to elongate this i think that's a good word for that and we can adjust uh, the graduation point here by pulling up on here but i want to just you know focus on this center center not center but area of the water right here and so you can just move it around and get it right where you think it looks good. 
And actually, what I'm doing is I'm doing wrong here. So if you look at my mask up here, I need to invert this mask. So I'm going to right click it and click on invert. And so now the dark part will be inside of the uh, mask here. So I was messing up there. If I go too high here, see how dark in that building there. So be careful here. And, and you can, again, you can readjust these guys here to wherever you like them. You can even pull out on this, make it larger. And you can actually angle it as well. And I'm going to see where that little angle deal comes. It only comes when you're in here. Okay. So you got to be around this uh, dot in the center here to get that angle. I'm still learning this tool myself here. Gets a little tough to control there. And so right around there, I think it's working good because I'm maintaining that light under there. So that's good. Now let's just play with our exposure. So I don't want to go too dark, but I'm just really trying to lead your eye up to the, to the buildings. I do like the reflections on the water too, so I don't want to go too dark, but just enough. Just a little bit, something like that. Now let's click the... Um, no, nah, I can't really. So what I'm going to do, I was going to say click the before and after, but on the light, you can't do that. So let's come up to the layers, and I can click this little checkbox here. There's a before and after. We're almost done. Now, the light's coming in from this side of the image, and this bridge is getting a little light here. This, this, you know, it's drawing my eye. So I just want to tone that down just a little bit. So to do it, let's do another layer. Uh, add new adjustment layer. And you guessed it light exposure pull the exposure down a little bit maybe check the highlights maybe nah i don't think i'm gonna mess with those but maybe just the exposure i just want to tone it down a little bit i'm doing smart contrast what am i doing okay if you get one of these guys and you want to get it right back to the default just double click it i want exposure somebody out there was saying dave you're hitting the wrong slider there i was wondering why it was acting kind of wonky for me that's a good word i think wonky so right there so now let's come to edit mask and we're using all kind of masking tools today so we use the luminosity we use gradient we use radial and now we're using brush didn't plan it this way but i needed them all so we're on the brush mask i'm on paint in so as soon as i start to paint the rest of the image will get light and I'll only start to darken this area. Now, I'm, my opacity is at 100%, which I think I'm going to start out there. Softness at 100 and size is 100. Everything's 100. So I just want to paint over in here. Just to tone this area down a little bit here. Just thought it was getting a little bit strong. So, let's readjust. That's way too strong. Maybe somewhere right around in there. Now let me just play with the highlight. Yeah, maybe just... I want it to look natural, so i got to be careful here. I'm thinking there. Yeah, so that's pulling. It's a little bit light up in here, too. Uh, maybe what I'll do is try something here. Let's take the opacity. Let's drag it down to about 30% or so. And let me just... I, I don't like this because the light is naturally coming over here, but let's just tone it. Tone it down. Well, that's doing some weird thing there. Okay, you see that little line shooting across there? Probably because I got my screen recording stuff on and I'm doing a lot here. So, I think that looks pretty good. Now, let's do the little toggle here. It's not the toggle and I keep messing up. I got to come back to, to the layers. That's a before and after, not a toggle switch. Okay, so now we can do the check. Yeah, and I think it tones it down a bit. Now, if you went overboard, you can take the opacity and you can come back on any one of your layers and pull that, pull that back a little bit. And maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll just ease up on that a little bit. So I think that's looking pretty good. Now, let's come up here and click the eyeball. Let's see where we've come from. 
Now we've come from this color image and we've come to this black and white. I really like this image in black and white. Let me know what you think. Hey, please leave comments and questions in the comment section below. I answer each and every one of my comments and questions. Um, even the not so nice ones. Okay, so I really appreciate everybody for viewing. Hold the presses, wait, there's more. Hey, I took my own advice and looked over my image and I thought the left and the right side were a little bit light, so I wanted to close those off too. So I just added uh, two more adjustment layers and did the same technique I used to uh, darken the top. I just uh, used a graduated filter. So I'll just show you. So let me check off layer six, which is the right side, and let me check off layer four, which is the left side. So you can just see the difference there. Okay, let me turn them back on. And now I'm happy. Well, we went from color to black and white. And I love Luminar 4. There's so many great tools inside of it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. If you did, please like and share it with your friends. And also, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing that. Um, and then click that like or not the like, but click the bell notification icon. And this way you'll be notified each time. I upload a new video. Well, thanks again for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see each and every one of you right here next time. But until then, happy editing.